What words do you need to talk about family? Not that many, actually. In this video, I'm going to teach you the most useful. Okay? If you have any questions as we go, of course, let me know in the comments. If you enjoy it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe. Now, let's get into the video. When we're talking about family, there are some really necessary words. And all I want to do is talk about them. Talk about the key vocabulary that you need to talk about family. Not just the relationships, but a few other important things too. So we're going to go through these uh, kind of in groups, right? We're going to start sort of our first little group that we're going to go into is immediate family. What are some vocabulary terms that we can use to talk about our immediate family? Maybe I should define that first. What is your immediate family? Your immediate family are the family that are nearest you to the side, below, and above. What do I mean by that? Above would be mother, father. Below would be son, daughter. To the side would be brother, sister. So if you're in the middle, right, sort of you're kind of looking around. Up, mother, father, down, son, daughter, over, sister, over, brother. So think about that as being immediate. Now, what happens when you go one layer out? Now you're in your extended family. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. But that outside, cousins, grandparents, nephews, nieces, those kinds of relationships, that is your extended family. Okay, so that's nuclear family, or that's immediate family. Nuclear family is, is, is generally the same thing. It's the center, right? The family unit. And often this is kind of regarded as parents and children. Parents and children, right? Usually living together, right? So often you don't have mother, father, son, daughter, and then their son or daughter. And so that's the difference between immediate family. I have my immediate family, which would be my parents, my two brothers, right? And now, did I say husband, wife? I should say that too, sorry. I should add, <laughs> I should add a spouse as well. I forgot to add that one too. That's immediate family. Then the nuclear family is even more local, really. It's the same people, right? But it's, it doesn't involve the whole, let's say, immediate family grouping, if that makes sense, because they don't usually all live together, right? So I am now living in my house, with my wife and my son, that would be my immediate and my nuclear family. But my immediate family would also include my two brothers, my parents, right? In addition to my wife. So I hope that makes sense. It can be a little confusing, but they're kind of close to the same thing that overlap, but not exactly. So what about biological parents? Biological parents, biological, think of Okay, biology, life, okay. Biological parents are, we can say, real, your real parents in the sense that you participated in them being alive. <laughs> You're their actual parents genetically, right? Maybe they look like you. My, my son kind of looks like me. I can tell he has my, my mouth and my wife's nose, right? So he's my biological child. But if I were to adopt a child, then, oops, then if I were to adopt a child, that would be my child, but not my biological child, right? And that child would then have parents, but not biological parents. And sometimes you hear people say, oh, I don't know who my biological parents are. I was raised by my adoptive parents or my adopted parents and that was a, a good experience or bad experience or whatever, but I never met my biological parents. Okay, so that's the difference. That's the difference. Um, one is sort of a biological relationship and the other is a family relationship. Okay, what about siblings? 
very simply, this is a, why do I keep going to the next slide? I'm really excited to get to the next slide. Your siblings are your brothers and sisters. Now be careful about this because this is different in different cultures. Often people use the word brother and sister and this is this is a particularly true for example in China people often use brother but actually it's cousin. And there are interesting reasons for that, but a sibling is your biological brother or sister, not cousins, okay? If it's your cousin, then it's your cousin, <laughs> not your siblings. So to be very clear, sibling is a non-gendered word to talk about brother or sister. Sibling, one. Siblings, two. As a parent, you wouldn't say you, wouldn't say you have siblings. You have children, right? Uh, but your sibling is your brother or sister, okay? Now, you mentioned, I mentioned, you mentioned, I mentioned, I mentioned the word spouse. So spouse is the person that you are married to, right? So your husband, your wife, that's what a spouse is. Now, generally, if people maybe live together for a long time, but they're not married, the first person who pops into my mind when I think of that is Peter Jackson. I think he and his he and his partner are not married, I think, but they've been together for many, many years. I think that you would still not say spouse. You would say partner or significant other. Often you hear, it's a pretty common word now, significant other. Spouse is specifically for a married relationship. Okay, so just to be clear, significant other, spouse are kind of similar. Now, what about offspring, your offspring. Well, this is the same as, in a sense, saying children, but it's a broader word, right? Um, when we're speaking generally about children, maybe not my children, people might not call their own children their offspring so often, right? But, but maybe we should be concerned about our offspring speaking more generally. Or you could be talking about nature. You could be talking about, you know, the offspring of the antelopes. You could be talking about different species that are, you know, non-human species, like antelope. S antelope or antelopes? Is antelope... I always forget. Is antelope the plural of... Anyway, you can talk about any, let's say, <laughs> animal, person, whatever, perhaps a mushroom, uh, I don't know if you could use it for plants, maybe, that comes from a previous generation. That's offspring. There you go. So it's a very broad word. And if you want to be more specific, then you would say child or children. Now we can go to the next slide. Okay, so we said cousin. Again, cousin specifically is when your parent, one parent, has a sibling, now we know sibling, brother or sister, who then has children, and those children, those are your cousins. And the word cousin has no gender, okay? So if I say my cousin is, you don't know if my cousin is a boy or a girl. We do not have a common word to immediately label a cousin as male or female. That's interesting, I think. So how do you know then? Well, it's once you start talking about the cousin that you might then slowly discover that. My cousin Sarah or she, I might start to use the pronoun to indicate the gender of my cousin, right? But the interesting thing is one generation higher, they would then have nephews and nieces, right? So for example, my brother has two kids and those are my nephews. So that tells you everything you need to know. They are boys, two boys. They are my nephews. And if he had one boy and one girl, then I would say I have a nephew and a niece. So that does have a gender, but cousin doesn't. I, I find that interesting, right? If you go up, then there's also gender. So for example, the nephew 
has an uncle and an aunt, right? Or the niece has an, an uncle and an aunt, and that tells you uncle, man, and woman, okay? Now, what about in-laws? This is an interesting relationship. This is a relationship by marriage, but it can go in all kinds of different directions. So my biological brother, my sibling, is the brother-in-law of my wife. Think about that. Because we are married, then my biological brother, my sibling, is now the brother of my wife, but we have to add in-law so that we know that it is a married relationship because she's married to me. That's why. So what about my wife's parents? Well, then that would be my mother, same word, in-law, father-in-law. Are they different for either side of the family? No, no. If you ever need to say for extended family, which side of the family, for example, in Chinese, if you're talking about grandparents here, right, the father's parents or the mother's parents, and the, the child wants to say grandma or grandpa, in some languages like Chinese, there are specific words for all of those. You have to learn, you know, four different words to refer to mother's mother, mother's father, father's mother, father's mother, father's father. <laughs> Father's father's father, father's mother, mother's mother's mother, father. <laughs> well, that's not how we say it in English anyway. We use side for this. We would say on my mother's side. My grandma on my mother's side, my grandpa on my father's side, my grandmother on my mother's side, my grandfather on my father's side. Now, there are special words that some grandparents will adopt uniquely instead of being grandma, right? I called both of my grandmother's grand grandma. Grandmother is kind of formal. And I called both of my grandfather's grandpa. Both of them on both sides. So if I wanted, wanted to talk about them, I would say my grandma on my mother's side, my grandma on my father's side. But I know, for example, my mother, who's now a grand ma has a specific word that her grandchildren use when they talk to her and it's not grandma so that happens too but th but there's no rule for that they can come up with it like i want to be uh bl blarby or whatever you could come up with it i think there are some common ones but uh there's no hard language rule there okay so that's a little bit about the extended family. Let's talk about some generational terms. And again, just to be clear, generation is what? So generation is, let's say, levels in families. That's a simple way to say it, right? Grandparents, parents, children, three generations, three levels. That's it. That's it. If you say people say going back three generations, going back ten generations, this is a tradition, a family tradition that goes back 10 generations in our family. Wow. 10 generations? That would be grandma's grandma's grandma or something like that. By the way, how do we say that if you have a grandparent? And then what if you want to talk about your grandparent's parent? Well, this is actually very easy in English. All you have to do is add the word great. So you're, I was skipping to the next slide. I'm eager, always eager to go to the next slide. I want to go to the next slide. No, 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 we're not, we're not there yet. Uh, no, it's my, my finger slips. I've got my finger on a button and the button is very easy to push. So I pushed it by accident. We'll get there, we'll get there. <laughs> so in English, this is so easy. All you have to do is use the word great, which is a great word to use. So your grandmother's mother is your great grandmother. Oh. What about your grandmother's grandmother? Say another one, your great great grandmother. What about your grandmother's 
grandmother's mother. That would be, I think, <laughs> this is, I'm at my limit here. Wait, so that's, uh, one, two, three. yeah, that would be, I think that would be great. Your, my, your great, great, great grandmother. <laughs> you just keep going. I mean, you go, there's a point at which you stop because uh, it, it gets silly, right? But to say my great, great grandmother is not a thing that no one will ever say. Uh, you hear people say it, right? Now, we talked about a parents that may adopt children, right? Well, this is an interesting place to bring in words like guardian. So what is a guardian? A guardian is the person who is legally responsible for a child under the age of 18. At least in the United States, when you reach the age of 18, you're considered an adult. And legally, no person can say, oh, you're, you're not allowed to... Uh, do this. As a parent, you have some rights over your children. So you can set limitations. For example, if something happens in school, the parent or the person who's responsible must sign something, you know, that sort of thing. Well, what if, what if you're Spider-Man, you're Peter Parker, and you're not raised by parents who adopted you, your biological parents are not alive, for example. What if you were raised by your aunt, your Aunt May, like in Spider-Man? Well, Aunt May is still legally responsible for Spider-Man, for Peter Parker. And so when he needs, he's in high school and he needs somebody to sign something, well, then that would be a guardian, the legal responsible party. I remember in, uh, in, uh, the third Harry Potter film. Um, Prisoner of Azkaban. My favorite one. Harry is trying to... The, everybody gets to go to the, the small town, Hogsmeade, right? And Harry's not allowed to go. And so he asks the Professor McGonagall, Hey, you know, I want to go to Hogsmeade with everybody else. She says, no. And he says, why? And he, it's because no one has signed his permission slip. She says it has to be signed by a guardian. Well, why did they, why did his guardian not sign? Because it's his aunt and uncle and they hate him and they don't want him to have fun. So they didn't sign it. So his guardians did not sign it. Okay, so hopefully that's clear. What about maternal and paternal? So maternal is simply the adjective for mother and paternal is simply the adjective for father. And I believe this comes from, uh, from Latin. I'm assuming, I actually haven't looked at the etymology of maternal and paternal, but for example, the pater familias would be, is that that? I think that's the right term, right? It would be the, the head of the, the household and that, that P-A-T prefix there is a Latin prefix. I'm pretty sure that's where it's, it comes from. So, so paternal is the adjective for anything father related, related, right? And maternal is anything mother related. That could be something like maternal leave. After you have a baby, you take a, a leave of absence from maybe your job. That would be maternity leave, right? But maybe you have something like um, paternal responsibilities. Well, that would be using the adjective of what are the responsibilities of the father in this situation, patern paternal, paternal. Now, sometimes you'll hear this as a noun, paternity, maternity. For example, the maternity ward is the place in the hospital where mothers are to have babies, right? Okay, now what about foster parents and adoptive parents? We've talked about adoptive parents. That's usually the word that's used to talk about the parents, right? Um, not necessarily the word that that parents would use to talk about the, the children, but adoptive parents would be not your biological parents, which we've talked about. Foster parents, a foster parent, foster home, they're not officially your adoptive parents, but you might be in a special legal arrangement in a home 
temporarily. It's not as permanent as you are now my son or you are now my daughter legally. It's I have guardianship of you as a foster parent. And this is often for uh, children who are maybe brought up in uh, troubled homes and for some reason the child was taken away from the parents or you know something happened or whatever they can't find adoptive parents then there's a foster care system and it's notoriously not so great and you know there's a financial incentives that maybe a foster parents would have for becoming foster parents they don't always do the best job i'm not saying universally but it happens and it has a kind of negative reputation of, oh, he, he grew up in foster care. Often this uh, connotation of moving from home to home within this system. So it's more temporary, and often you're growing up with like siblings in a house who are other foster kids, and uh, they, they're not your real siblings. So anyway, it has this reputation. This is your foster parent. Really, they're a kind of guardian. They have the legal ability to sign that stuff. They are responsible for you in a sense, but they're neither your adoptive parents, nor are they your biological parents, okay? Finally, a few just useful words that I think we could mention, right? About particularly parents and kid, kids. So we know the word siblings now. You'll hear the term sibling rivalry. So if you know the word rival, this is sort of someone you oppose or someone who opposes you, someone you are against or someone who is against you as a sort of basic status of the relationship. You might, uh, you might talk about two sports teams and uh, the fans of these two sport, sports teams hate each other. Traditionally, they always have and they always will. I don't know, uh, I don't know football that well, but I know that happens a lot, right? Oh, it's these two teams are playing against each other and they are rivals more than any other two teams. I don't know. So a sibling rivalry would be the same thing where there's this tension between brother, 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 brothers, sister, sister, brother, sister. So some feeling of tension. It's not always violent or n terrible or anything, but sometimes there's a, uh, a feeling of maybe competition or tension between siblings. Now, what about estrangement? So to be estranged would be to, if you say, I'm estranged from my children, that's not, a, that's not really a legal status necessarily, but it's to have a lost relationship, right? Uh, to be sometimes either kicked out of the family or to just lose contact with this person, maybe a parent who, a father who was absent, for example. Again, for different reasons, and there are common reasons, but it's really more about the thing that happened and the fact that they're not there rather than some particular legal definition or status, right? Now, kinship is interesting because kinship comes from family, right? Kinship bonds, the bonds of kinship means often family bonds. And so kin often refers to family connection, right? To have a family that are a family group connected by special bonds that those would often be described as kinship bonds. However, this word kinship extends and is commonly used now to focus more on the feeling of the bond rather than the, the actual reality of it being family. In other words, you could say there's nothing more important than your kin and that would be your family, but that's kind of an outdated, antiquated expression. But if you say, I feel a strong sense of kinship with this group that I attend once a week, or with my high school classmates or my college roommates, or something like that, lifelong kinship, right? It's more about that the feeling of closeness rather than it being actual family. So it's kind of become that, more about this feeling of having a close family-like relationship with those people, right? Finally, favoritism. I think you can probably guess what this means, right? If there is favoritism happening, let's say 
parents treating their children differently. The children might accuse their parents of favoritism. Oh, you always give him more than you give me or her more than you give me. Now, it doesn't say if that's really happening or not, but favoritism would be to uh, suggest or say that someone is showing more uh, love, compassion, giving more to one than the other, right? And this could be for families, but it could stretch beyond this as well. Again, parents could do this for their children, and it might just be perceived favoritism, but actually not. Or you could have this in a workplace, right? Maybe one person seems to always get the best projects to work on, and the, the rest of the team gets to do the hard stuff. Well, it seems like the, the boss is showing some favoritism in the team, and that doesn't seem fair. Whether it's true or not, right? That's what it looks like, favoritism. So, mm, not fair. So, this can be used more broadly than for family things. Anyway, we've talked about quite a few words here. I hope you have a sense for what these mean and how to use them. But, whatever, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Try to use them on, on your own. Put those in the comments, too. The best way to really learn is to practice using things on your own, to put them into practice. Also, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe and get a free course in the description, Natural English Conversations.